bassoon players and oboists need to make their own reeds. Stephanie, will you show us how it begins? Yes, so it's a very somewhat complicated process, um, especially for somebody who doesn't know much about it. Uh, but it's so this is where our reeds come from. It starts from this special this like cane. It's called a rondo donax cane. It's sort of like bamboo. So you can imagine it being a very tall stalk like yes. bamboo, and then they cut it into pieces like this. Um, and so you'll see it's a it's a tube. Yes. And it's fairly it's a thick. very straight. Yes. Tube. Right. You want a very straight piece. That's yes. ideal. Otherwise, your reeds will end up doing something a little wonky, which is not desirable. Um, so we start here, and then what happens from there is that then it gets split into four pieces vertically. Uh -huh. okay. So then you get something similar to this. So this has been split, but it's also been, there's been a cane removed from this side of it. Mm -hmm. So you get this piece that's very close, you know, we have the outer bark, but it's also very thin. So and this is very smooth now. So it's regular? thinner mm -hmm. and smooth. Right, okay. so it's set to the, uh, so I buy this already gouged, that's not something I do myself, but some people do. Mm -hmm. But it, it involves some some very um, sturdy machinery <laughs> yes. um, and a lot of precision. So I just trust somebody else to do that part of the process for me. Right. Um, and yeah, so this is called a gouged piece of cane. Mm -hmm. So this is how I receive it. And then I put it on a special machine because you'll see the next stage that we get to is this. And you see that this, the cane has been, the outer cane has been removed just a little bit. Right. So you can see the grain of the wood that lies so underneath. That, and then you've made these ends mm -hmm. thinner. Right. So this is a combination of, of, you put this on a machine, the very sharp blade that goes back and forth, it takes off mm -hmm. this little bit of cane. Right. And then after that, then you put it on another uh, sort of this, uh, it's called a shaper, it's a piece mm -hmm. of metal, and you sort of shave off the sides so that you get this very specific shape. Yes. And then after that, what happens is I soak this in water for a long time so it's nice and flexible. Then what we do is we fold it in half. Mm -hmm. So I can't do it now because it's dry, so right. it'll just break. But you hold, fold it in half so this end and this end meet. Mm -hmm. And then what you do is you, we're trying to get it to something that looks like this. Yes. And with this, you'll notice the back of it is very round mm -hmm. because that has to go onto oh. the end of the vocal. You can't have any sort of gaps, any <sighs> opportunity for the air to leak out. Sure. So you basically, you fold this piece of cane and then you sort of mash it around and make it round and put wires on it and let it dry like that so it gets mm -hmm. used to being in that shape. And then after that happens, then you you wrap it up with the thread yes. so that it just stays nice and round and everything stays in place. Now these and then are, you clip the tip so, open yes. and then that's when we get a reed that happens. Now, this is rather like fishermen making flies. <laughs> yes, and it's very I similar. See mm -hmm. you have all of these beautiful colors. Yes. No. Well, I have to admit, that's my favorite part. <laughs> yeah, I see. Yes, it's I can choosing some that. beautiful yarn, uh, beautiful thread right. for, for wrapping my bassoon reeds. Yes. Um, because I feel like that's one one aspect of its beauty that I can control. <laughs> A lot of it, you, you aren't really sure until you get to this stage of when you open it up and you start playing on it. And even once you open it, then there's a lot of work that happens too. So you, you, you take the blades and you scrape them in a very specific way so that they respond and create sort of the sound that you need to have. Now, how long is it between when you start with this piece of cane mm. and you get to where you play it for the first time? Is this days, weeks? Um, ideally weeks. weeks. So there's, especially after you have formed it and it's something, you know, it's it's in the wires and it's drying and it's in its yes. rounded shape for the first time. I usually like to let it sit there for as long as possible. So weeks, months would be ideal. Often I, I don't have yeah. that luxury yes. of that amount of time, but often weeks at that point and then moving on. So, so ideally from here to here will be a couple months. Six weeks, time. maybe 
So this this is really two parts of learning this instrument. It is. But fortunately, you don't have to learn this right away. The reed making can come later. So That's good. when you start playing the bassoon, you can often your teacher will help you out with reeds, or mm -hmm. you can purchase them places, um, and you know that's that's great for getting a start. This takes a lot of practice um, mm -hmm. to learn, you know how to make reeds. I mean, it takes years and years, um, but it's okay because you don't have to do it right from the very beginning. What does it sound like if you just blow on one of the reeds? All right, well I can show you, but I first have to soak it up. Ah, uh, so okay. So now we have some water. I'll take my reed and I just dunk it in there and let it sit for a few seconds. <laughs> because all that water has to work its way up through all the grains of the wood so that it's fully soaked and saturated with water. So it's totally soaked. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, otherwise a dry reed doesn't really do anything. So this is a dry reed. It doesn't really sound like much of anything. As you'll notice when I So it's a bit louder, right? Yes, much louder. Yeah, so um, it's very important to soak the reed. So then the reed goes on to the vocal. It's just like that. Okay. So then now. 